everybody and welcome to our first live event for today. I'm Sarah and this is Kat and we have a few of our animals that live here at the Estuary Center out to meet you today. In my hands I have an Eastern Box Turtle. This is one of the animals that you might find out in your backyard or if you go on a hike or a walk at a park nearby. He's super cool and there's some really cool adaptations that we'd like to talk to you about today. But if you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the comments and we'll answer whatever you can, whatever we can. And I'm sure you're curious what Kat has in her hands too. Hi everyone, so I have another one of our backyard neighbor friends. This is a black rat snake. A lot of my friends have already seen them sunning in their backyards or even lounging on their fences. And I'm gonna tell you all about her. She is a wiggle worm though, so I'll be watching her a lot and looking up at the camera. <laughs> But I really want to know, Sarah, why is a box turtle called a box turtle? So a box turtle is called a box turtle because they have a very cool adaptation on their lower shell that's a hinge, like a door. And as you guys can see it at home, it's this line that goes across their bottom shell. And what that does is when they pull their arms and their head inside, they can close their whole shell up, just like a box. And that's really special for these kinds of turtles. So no other turtles can do that except for the box turtles. And there's six different subspecies of them that can act like that. Now, Pat, where can I find a black rat snake if I am outside? Yeah, so they are very common in Maryland and also throughout the Northeast. So you can find them out in the woods or even sometimes in barns or backyards, like I said. And what's really cool is they're arboreal, so they can actually climb. So a lot of times they'll climb up into trees and they love to eat one of their favorite snacks, which is eggs for eggs. What does your friend like to eat, Sarah? So our turtle friend here likes to eat a lot of different things. They are a type of omnivore, which means they eat plant matter and different animals. So when they're young and juveniles, they eat a lot more small animals, such as bugs, like mealworms or earthworms that they can dig up. But as they get older, they switch more to herbivorous stuff. So they might eat leafy greens or anything that they can find in the grass, maybe a wild strawberry, something yummy like that. Here we feed them mealworms and earthworms, stuff like that. So if we look close at his mouth, you can see this beak that he has, and he uses his beak to eat those foods. So some things that are a little bit harder to eat, like worms that he needs to get, he'll use that beak to chomp down on them. So Kat, when we find our snakes, sometimes we might see them stick their tongue out. What is he doing when he sticks his tongue out? That is a very cool adaptation of my friend. If she'll stay a little less squirmy, we might get to see her stick her tongue out. She is actually smelling with that tongue. And I'd like some people at home to maybe give this a shot. Maybe try plugging your nose, giving a sniff to your neighbor, see if, <laughs> see if you can smell anything. Mm, probably not, right? Um, my friend here though, she has a special organ that helps her smell with that tongue. And it's called the Jacobson's organ. And what she does is she sticks that tongue out, it's forked so she can smell the left and the right side. And then if there is something of interest, she will head in that direction. And that's often how she finds her food, like those eggs, or even her common name, black rat. She loves those rat snacks too. And just remember everyone, if you have any questions, chime on in. Me and Sarah will keep going back and forth, but we'd love to hear what you want to hear about. So Sarah, where might I find my friend? Where does he live? So box turtles live all across the East Coast. So we can find them in Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, all the way down to Florida sometimes. And we can find them out in the woods. They are terrestrial turtles, so they're not gonna be swimming in the water like these water turtles down here. And we can see him, so if we're on a hike, we might see him in the woods. And he likes to walk around in the leaf litter because he has really good camouflage for that. So if we see these colorations that he has, he has nice oranges and browns on him and yellows. And that looks often like the leaf litter that we see on the ground in the forest. 
So it might be hard to find them, but you might see a shell poke up and stick out, and you can spot them through all that camouflage. So Pat, one time I found a big snake skin in my basement, and I was wondering if there was a snake in my house. What does it mean when I find a snake skin? What does that come from? Ah, so my friends, as they grow, they lose their scales or their skin. So they can do this a couple of months or a couple times a month when they're smaller and then it tapers off as they get older. So my friend, she is pretty long, especially when I uncurl her, if she'll uncurl. But my black rat snake friend here can get up to five feet. I've seen one pretty close to that, but they stay normally around the three to four. And they only weigh about three to four pounds as well. Oh, now she doesn't want to curl back <laughs> up. Now, Angela says um, watching snakes drink is so relaxing. It is. So my friend here, she does sip water. She'll take it in kind of like a cat does and open her mouth and kind of lap it in with her tongue. It is very relaxing to watch. It's soothing almost. And it really shows a personality to a snake other than the fear that some people see uh, when they notice them. Yes, and now she's smelling me if you can see that tongue there. I don't know if you can. But yeah, if you do find a snake skin, there's nothing really to worry about. It doesn't mean that snake is there right now, but it is something to notice, and if there is one around, just finding an easy way to release that animal back out into the wild. Sarah? I have a very curious question. Can you tell the difference between a male and a female box turtle? Yes, so there's a couple things that are different between the males and the females. So a common thing that you can see from a distance without having to touch is their eyes. So a lot of male box turtles have red turtle, whereas a lot of female box turtles have yellow eyes. And now you can't always trust that there's a little bit of variation, but it's a good common way to tell. And now if you ever, so R, since we can pick him up and see, he actually curves in on the bottom. And so male turtles often have this curve, and all male box turtles have this curve. Whereas the females, it would be flat across. So that's a very good way to tell, and that's always the same. Um, Adam would like to know, what happens if my turtle accidentally gets a bite of my Taco Bell crunch wrap? Oh no! <laughs> Well, we often want to try to keep our people food away from our box turtles and our other turtles because I don't think they're meant to be eating Taco Bell, <laughs> although it is very yummy. So we, all, we want to make sure that they keep just to their leafy greens, their veggies, and their worms. <laughs> um, so we have some other questions. Uh, Jennifer um, and Jackson said they would like to see the snake drink if that's possible. I'm not sure if we could actually get that done. <laughs> no, she's been thing. lounging in the water lately, not so much drinking the water. <laughs> I think um, she's a little high. Kara has a great question. She wants to know, do uh, rat snakes bite? Do rat snakes bite? No, so they're not commonly going to do the striking unless they are fearful of something. They are constrictors. So what they're going to do when they do find that prey of theirs, they're going to wrap around it nice and tight and then give it a good squeeze. But you can see she's not really squeezing me that hard. She's treating me more like a tree. She's just hanging on to me. And she's also non-venomous. So you don't have to worry about if you were to accidentally come across one or you know have that fateful encounter that nobody likes. She is not going to produce any venom, though she likes to mimic some of our venomous snakes here in Maryland. She'll actually, as a defense, take her tail and smack it against the ground really fast to pretend to be a rattlesnake. So it's a common misconception. But I think it is important to remember that everything does have a, have a mouth yes. and it can bite you. So we want to make sure that if we see them in the wild, we can look at them and we can see how cool they are, but we want to keep our distance and respect their space. Yes. So Kat, do snakes have bones? Why are they so wiggly like that? Ah, they are essentially one big muscle. They do have a skeleton and it forms 
around like their lung area across their body. But they're one big muscle. They're gonna move as like you're gonna flex your muscles back and forth. That's essentially what she's doing. And if she'll get a close up of her kind of constricting and tightening that muscle around me there. So it's a very strong ability. She also is very determined in which way she wants to go. What about your friend? How does the shell, is it made of bone? What's it made of? So the shell is really interesting. And sometimes we see in cartoons, the turtles walk out of their shell and change their clothes or something silly like that. But the shell is actually fused to their spine. So they have these little ridges that we can see on the top of their shell, and those are actually their spine. So the shell is part of their body, and it acts like their skeleton. It keeps them safe, right? And so they wouldn't be able to walk out of their shell or anything like that. So this is their permanent home. <laughs> it grows with them, and they keep it their whole life. <laughs> now, Kat, if I saw a black lab snake outside, what should I do? Well, it, it's not in any form of your area or your personal space. Just want to leave it be. My friend here, she's not going to do any harm. She's actually mostly, she's all beneficial. She controls that rat population, like I said. And that's really going to help you in the long run. Rats carry a lot of diseases. It's really more of she is an exterminator for the rat population. So as long as she is in her own space and you are comfortable in your space, we're just going to leave her be. You're welcome to take a look at her. Uh, I would suggest just leaving that personal space, especially like we are now. That six feet is a good number, even for her. And if she were to be in your own personal space or your bubble or your habitat, you could easily just find somebody to help remove her from it. Um, it can easily be done. They are pretty docile animals. They're not ones that are gonna be super moving. But um, really, if you're not comfortable doing it, find someone to help you with it. What about box turtles? Do they often come into yards and should we remove them from them? So box turtles are really special with this. They are hatched and live within 700 feet of the state, 750 feet of the same area for their whole life. So sometimes we might see them in our backyard and we might want to take them in and look at them, but that's not a very good idea to take them inside because it'll confuse them. They're so smart and they create a map inside their head of that area that they live in. So they know where the water is, they know where the food is, they know where other turtles are and threats might be. So if we take them out of that area and home with us, then they don't know anything about the new area they're in. And if we release them in a new area, they'll spend their whole life trying to get back to their home ground of that 750 feet of where they were hatched. So it's really important that we leave box turtles where we found them, or else they'll be very, very confused because they've studied that land so much. Miss Pat, what is your favorite thing about the black rat snake? Ah, so one of my favorite things about the black rat snake is the fact that they can climb. Like I said earlier, they're arboreal, so they like to climb into trees. Other than the rats that we've talked about them eating, they love to eat bird eggs. And so they have that ability or adaptation to climb into trees to find that nice juicy snack. Uh, not a lot of snakes do this, so that's what makes them really cool. And also, that's uh, why some people get a little shocked by them, because they'll find them in places that you wouldn't expect, like trees or fence posts hanging out, or even in your barn. So just being aware that they are there sometimes, and it's a really cool adaptation that they have. Also, another thing I do like about them is when they're born, they're actually not this black color. They are more of a speckly gray, and she still has some of it, and as she sheds, it becomes more of that black coloration. Um, Anita has a question. Um, suppose we see a turtle crossing a road, what should we do? So if you see a turtle crossing the road, you can We want to make sure that we put them in the direction that they're going. So if they're, if, 
if they are headed in one spot, we want to make sure that they go to that spot that they are at. What about if it's a snapping turtle? A snapping turtle. <laughs> that is a very different question. <laughs> so most turtles, like our box turtles, you can pick them up and you don't have to worry about them snapping at you. You grab them from both sides and you're very gentle and careful, but snapping turtles, unless you're trained, I would say try and seek help. <laughs> with people who are trained and know what they're doing because they can be very hurtful to a person if they do snap you they are very powerful and you cannot grab them from both sides like you would a normal turtle because they can reach their neck around and they can snap at you so i would call a proper authority that can help you to remove the, tur the snapping turtle and get it to where it needs to be or also helping to stop traffic is a yes. great thing. So helping stop traffic and let the turtle actually cross on its own. Yes, yeah. definitely yeah. be careful. Of be careful of the snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Kat, I noticed that the scales on the bottom of our tank look a little different than the rest of the scales. Can you tell me why that is? Yeah, so the scales on the bottom, if I can get, she just got comfy too. <laughs> if you look, they're a little bit longer. They actually help her scoot along the movement, or along the ground in the movement. So if she were to move, it's almost like an accordion style. She would move and these scoots would move along with her. It's kind of hard to show and describe that movement. Hopefully she'll do it for you here in a second. Oh, yes, excellent idea. Let's see if she'll, yeah. No, nope, you're not gonna let go? <laughs> There's a little bit of a movement there. You can see that muscle moving as well too. So do that slithering S kind of movement. Really snake-like. Sean said he found a snapping turtle and a male eastern box turtle today. Oh, wow. Oh, that nice. is so exciting. So we're actually going to see if she'll do a little bit climbing for you guys, too, here. We're going to move this way. We have, have a, like her exercise. Yeah. <laughs> we have a tree here. We'll see if she can do a little bit of work now. There she goes. So this is part of our animal enrichment that we have here, and it's really important for when we have animals that live in captivity like this, that we keep them enriched, which means that we do activities that keep them stimulated and exercised. So our tree is a good enrichment for our animals. One really cute thing that snakes do too, they like to anchor themselves with their tails. So right now she's using me as her anchor safety net. That way, if she were to lose her balance or grip, she has a way to still hang on. Looks like she doesn't want to do too much climbing at the moment. She's kind of exploring the underside. So Kat, how big will she get? She. This is pretty much her full growth. Um, like I said, they can get to be about five feet in length. So she's finally letting go. She feels a little safer. But watch her tail. She'll grip that around that branch soon enough as a protection. And what happens if uh, people find them in their house, uh, like in the winter? In the winter? So in winter, they're seeking a place to brumate. So brumation is just a form of hibernation for reptiles. If you do find one uh, and you are not comfortable with where it's at, you can seek some help in removal of that animal. If you're a comfortable person like myself or other people in this room, I would leave them be. They're, they're most likely just going to stay for the winter and move on. I'm 
a really cool fact is it is almost nesting season for them. So they're coming out of brumation. They're going to start laying their clutches of eggs around now, June and August, through August. And they actually like to hide them in leaf litter or in decaying logs. So if you have these in your backyard, they're actually an excellent habitat for not just the snake to reproduce, but other animals as well, like the box turtle. So while we're watching our snake move, we can also see how our turtle moves. So our box turtle, he can be a little speedy. I don't know if he's gonna show us how fast he can actually be right now. But he works his way through the dirt and the leaves and the sticks without getting hurt because he has these really strong scales on his arms and his legs. And they're really thick and it's like an armor that he has. So we'll let him walk around and we can see his movement. Thank you, going after Lauren's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so our box turtle was bred in captivity, which means that he has a little bit of funky behavior. So sometimes he might go chasing after boots, like he's doing with mine. I think he sees these brown, round things, but I don't know if he thinks it's another turtle or what he is thinking in his head, but he does have this funky behavior because he was bred in captivity. So it's not something you'd see in a wild turtle. You're not gonna see a wild box turtle coming around and chasing your boot like this one's doing it's fine. But it is something that's pretty silly from his captive bred behaviors. <laughs> Boots is not a very healthy form of diet, but <laughs> he still eats his other food. <laughs> a little bit of enrichment, I guess. Yeah. Another form of enrichment, keep them entertained. <laughs> oh, oh, he's hanging on it. <laughs> Anita has a question. Yes. Um, I've heard that box turtles will crawl towards shoes because the shoe strings resemble worms. Ah, another theory that could be possible. Mm -hmm. I have seen other turtles do that with the shoelaces. Interesting. Yeah. Definitely a possibility. I could see how they resemble worms. <laughs> I think he might be ready for his dinner today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not all box turtles are quite as bright as he is. The color varies for each individual. So some box turtles might be more brown or yellow. He's very orange though. If anybody does have any last minute questions, we'd be happy to answer them right now. But it is almost time for us to be wrapping up here. Uh, hopefully once all of our procedures of social distancing is over, we can let you guys come back and see not only these two amazing animals, but the other ones that we have here as well. And we also have a current resident that will eventually be leaving us, but we're actually gonna hand it over to Missy to talk about because I don't feel I have the information <laughs> as much. Um, okay, so uh, we received this little guy yesterday. Um, he was actually found in Aberdeen in a parking lot. And at first glance, he just looks like a average little baby turtle, right? Absolutely adorable. Um, I've never seen a baby turtle that I didn't like. Uh, but this little guy is very, very special. Um, I don't know how well you can see his markings with uh, the camera on the live feed, but um, he has really, really ornate kind of uh, markings on his head. He has this beautiful plastron, which is the bottom of his shell. Really, really amazing markings. And then the very top, the carapace, the top of his shell, has these 
amazing little swirls and I'm sure it's really hard for them to show up right now. Um, so this little turtle is a special type of turtle that's actually endangered here in Maryland. Um, this is a northern map turtle uh, and we feel really privileged and lucky to be able to have him right now. Um, we're actually talking to state biologists trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do with him. We unfortunately don't know exactly where he came from so we're trying to find a little bit more information. Uh, if the person that dropped him off would like to give us a call um, and let us know a little bit more if they know any more information about him, um, just because it is very important. But we want to be able to get this guy back out in the wild. Like I said, we're taking good care of him right now, but we want him in the breeding population. So we're in talks with our state um, biologist to figure out exactly what our next step should be. But we did want to share him with you. We wanted you guys to see absolutely how adorable he is um, and how amazing this species is. Map turtles are incredibly beautiful. I, 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 I recommend that you go ahead and uh, Google a picture of an adult one because they're very, very, the shell is very ornate and very beautiful. Um, but they're an incredible aquatic, freshwater aquatic turtle um, that uh, their, their population has declined so much that they're actually on the state endangered list now. So hopefully we can get more of these guys back um, and get their population numbers going back up. All right, so let me go ahead and put him right back in the water. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our little animal encounter meet and greet today. Just so you know, we do have a lot of events coming up, a lot of videos being posted throughout the day, as well as another Facebook Live at one o'clock. That's our official wait in so you'll see us all out on the river. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.